the turn of the century. What an adventure just to get behind the wheel of a motor car. Our roads presented a tough challenge, but those pioneers didn't have to battle with thousands of other motorists just to get onto the highway. A far cry from the stop and start on our crowded streets today. When busy roads meet or intersect, you need to establish right of way or give each stream of traffic a fair go. We're all familiar with stop signs, giveaway signs, traffic lights or the police officer on point duty. But for many of us, roundabouts are something of a novelty. We'll be seeing more and more of them on our roads, so let's spend a few minutes seeing how they work and the benefits they offer to drivers and the community. They say it's love that makes the world go round. And the French were the first to make the traffic go round at Place de l'Etoile and Place de la Bastille back in 1907. Twelve roads converge at l'Etoile, a giant roundabout handling a flow of more than 20,000 vehicles an hour around the Arc de Triomphe. Roundabouts were introduced in Great Britain in 1910. Trafalgar Square, Hyde Park Corner and Piccadilly Circus are classic examples of the system in action today. You find roundabouts at suitable road junctions all over the UK and Australia. Research confirms that they improve traffic flow and reduce accidents, especially when legislation requires vehicles to give way to traffic already on the roundabout. Vehicles approaching on different roads all have equal opportunity for entry to a roundabout. Traffic flow is improved because vehicles keep moving when the way is clear. Roundabouts reduce accidents because speeds are lower and because the system is simple. You always go round in the clockwise direction and turn left into the exit road you want. At some traffic lights, vehicles queue up to turn right. This causes delays and frustrations to drivers. Roundabouts help you keep moving. With roundabouts, there's nothing to go wrong, and they're far cheaper to install and maintain. Reduced delays mean a saving in precious fuel, less air pollution, and less noise. We all know how people race away from lights. When drivers follow the correct procedure, roundabouts really do offer gains all round. Here we go. It's as simple as this. Barabri Road's first left. Nothing coming, so round she goes. Didn't lose any time there, did she? This motorcyclist wants to go straight on. He slows, waits for the truck to go through, then round the roundabout. Indicates a left turn, and straight on he goes. This driver will be going left, and good on him, he's moved into the left lane as he approaches the roundabout. He has to stop until there's a gap. And that includes giving way to the cyclist. Of course, cyclists have just as much right to use a roundabout as any other traffic. But they're very vulnerable, and drivers need to give them plenty of room and consideration. You need to think ahead with lanes. Joan uses this road every day to and from school. She'll be turning right. So she's in the right-hand lane, uses her right turn indicator on approach, maintains the signal until passing the exit before the one she takes, then changes to the left turn indicator, checking it's safe to move over. That's it. Off she goes, and she's heading for home. Pedestrian crossings are located near some roundabouts at a safe distance and to make the most of the fact that vehicles have to slow down. 
Roundabouts themselves aren't a pedestrian facility, but they do slow up the traffic in the vicinity, making it easier for pedestrians to judge and cross safely. People should never walk onto or across the island. As a rule, it's safer to cross the road a short distance from the roundabout. Elderly or handicapped people should be particularly careful. And young cyclists are advised not to ride around a roundabout. It's safer for them to walk their bikes, crossing where other pedestrians cross. On residential roads, small roundabouts discourage speeding and through traffic, another benefit for the local community. With a big truck, Keith always has to think ahead. On approaching a roundabout, he makes sure he picks the correct lane and lets other drivers know well in advance where he's going. When on a roundabout, look out for and show consideration to other drivers crossing in front of you, especially those intending to leave by the next exit. And watch out for long vehicles. When ready to leave the roundabout, signal your intention to turn left in sufficient time, watch out for vehicles on your left, and move into the correct exit lane. Of course, if you miss your exit, you simply go round again. Roundabouts help to keep you rolling, right Keith? Yes, and they're going to help keep traffic rolling at more and more junctions in New South Wales. For further information, contact your local council.